Thanks for clicking. China's economic news continued to worsen this week, as analysts all across the board continued to slash their GDP projections for the rest of 2022, and many saying that U.S. economic growth might outpace China's for the first time in almost 50 years. As a result of the continuing real estate crisis, it was my fault. China's zero COVID policy and continual worries about its GDP growth rate, the PBOC, the People's Bank of China, held a meeting with China's top bankers and encouraged them to get lending, get money pumping into the economy. Beijing also announced a whole host of new spending measures, planning to pump more than $5 trillion in stimulus into the Chinese economy to try to get things going again. So what I want to do today is delve into China's economy as it's facing its worst growth rate since 1976, then I'm going to go over some of the steps being taken by Beijing to revitalize the economy, as they definitely seem to be getting more and more serious about getting the economy up and running again. As we've seen over the past few months, the situation in China is worsening, despite Beijing's continual attempt to reverse the real estate and growing economic crisis. We'll continue to have updates on the state of China's real estate crisis and its growing economic problems on this channel every Friday. If you want to get those updates, make sure you click like and subscribe. But for now, let's get into China's economy. Well, China has stated officially that they will hit a 5.5% GDP growth rate this year. As a result of the zero COVID policy and continual real estate crisis, Multiple analysts have been downgrading China's GDP growth rate for the past couple of months and continued those downgrades this week. No good. No good. No good. For their part, UBS Investment Bank downgraded their GDP forecast for China down to 3%, previously sitting at 4.2%, and JP Morgan also downgraded China's growth rate from 4.3% down to 3.7%. Further, in addition to the 3.7% growth rate, JP Morgan is also saying that in the second quarter, China will actually have a GDP reversal of 5.4%. While a 3.7% growth rate might not seem like a big deal by Western standards, it certainly is in China. The basic contract between the Chinese regime and its citizens is that Beijing delivers the goods, delivers the jobs, delivers economic growth, and in exchange, China's citizenry accepts widespread state censorship, non-democratic elections, restrictions on freedom, etc. You knew the deal. But with the lockdowns, defaults, and growing real estate crisis, China could very well underperform the United States this year. The symbolic significance of China underperforming the United States this year would be huge. It's long been assumed that China's growth rate would just keep on going and would eventually overtake that of the United States. And this was long assumed by China as well. Just this year, China's President Xi Jinping told officials to ensure that Chinese GDP growth outpaced that of the United States. I'm not asking. Now, it's possible that once the zero COVID lockdowns are over, China could very well spring back to its previous heyday of economic growth. That is definitely possible, but it's important to remember that even when these lockdowns are over, China still has a major real estate crisis on its hands, and it's not looking like that's getting any better either. Further, if the zero COVID policy does persist, and it doesn't look like they're ramping that down anytime soon, a series of stop-go measures from China, where they open the economy back up and shut it back down, open it back up, you get the idea, is going to greatly inhibit any return to China's previous economic growth rate. Understanding the extent of the economic difficulties facing China right now, Chinese Premier Li Qingguang, I probably butchered that, admitted that the economy is probably worse than it was in 2020 and called on Chinese banks to start lending again. As a result, the PBOC held a meeting with 24 of China's largest banks and encouraged them to get lending again. Essentially instructing the big major uh, financial institutions, 24 of them were represented uh, at that meeting on Monday, telling them, you gotta lend more. You, you absolutely have to lend more. In addition to pressuring the banks to get lending more, Beijing is also planning $5 trillion in stimulus this year in the form of triple R cuts, fiscal spending, tax cuts, and special bonds. The planned stimulus, however, has failed to assuage investors' fears 
that China can, in fact, turn the economy around. It's also hard to see how people can borrow when they're locked down, right? So as a result of the zero COVID policy and the real estate crisis continuing to hit China, China could very well underperform the United States this year for the first time in almost 50 years. Now, it should be noted that China definitely does have more room for fiscal and monetary stimulus than we do have here in the West, in the US and in Canada. Our inflation rates right now sit between 6.5% to 8.5%, whereas China's inflation rate is only at 2.1%. So China can spend. China can open up the fiscal taps, as it were, without worry that it's going to do too much damage to its inflation rate, for now at least. With that said, it's not clear the extent to which that money will actually work to re-stimulate the economy, especially with so many of the local governments dragged down by debt, so many of the real estate developers defaulting and more is are set to come. And with the zero lockdown policy, as we've said, it's very difficult for people to spend when they're locked down. We'll obviously continue to have updates on China's lockdowns, on their real estate crisis and the impact on their economy on this channel every Friday. If you want to get those updates, make sure you click like and subscribe and thanks so much for watching.